Hi, my name is Ko, and I'm with the Institute of Electronics at Graz University of Technology. In this short clip, I would like to talk about decoupling capacitors. When you buy a capacitor, you will get an inductor for free. A trade which sounds like a benefit first, turns out as a real disadvantage. Today, I've brought the Vector Network Analyzer with me. Um, there are two SMA connectors, and we can place some capacitors here. So those capacitors are placed in a shunt orientation. So the plus pin of our capacitor is on the middle pin of our SMA connector, and the minus pin of our capacitor is placed here on the reference connection of our SMA connector. Today, I would like to analyze those three capacitors. First, a decoupling capacitor. A decoupling capacitor acts as a small charge reservoir and helps to stabilize the power source for the IC. So they are often placed as close as possible to the IC and they minimize the loop area um, between IC and the power supply rails. So those are very important. Second here, we have a one microfarad foil capacitor. So this can be used for bypass reasons. So for instance, to filter out some unwanted RF emissions. And last but not least, we have here an electrolytic capacitor. So those are, have really high capacitances. So this one here has 100 microfarad and those bulk capacitors are used to maintain a constant DC voltage and current for our components. So often in front of an IC, we are using both a decoupling capacitor as close as possible to an IC and a bulk capacitor as well. And here on the bottom, I have plotted a typical impedance curvature of a capacitor. So in an ideal case, a capacitor is just described by one over J omega C. And so this is this part here. So a decrease of impedance over the frequency. But as it will get an inductor for free, after a specific resonance frequency, a capacitor acts as an inductor. So it acts like J omega L. So the equivalent series circuitry of this diagram could be here and resistor first. So this is often called as ESR, so equivalent series resistance. Then an inductance, often called as ESL, the equivalent series inductance. And then here, the capacitor. So ideally, we only have the capacitor, but we have those two other components as well. And the ESR is now represented as the point here. So let's say this is the bottom here. So the value we can measure here. This is the ESR. And because at some point the inductance of the whole circuitry increases, then here the capacitor, which should act as a capacitor, will now act as an inductor. Now let's start with the measurements. So before we are placing any component here on our test measurement setup, we can see that our network analyzer shows us an S to one pyramid of zero decibels, which is equal to the value one, which means that all the power which is driven here on port one is received here on port two. And now when we are placing capacitors here between plus and minus, then it becomes more attractive for high frequency signals for taking another path and therefore the S to one pyramid decreases. So now let's start with our first component. 
So let's start with the decoupling capacitor. So with our ceramic capacitor. And here we can now see the shape of our capacitor. So we can see here, um, this is here the resonance frequency. So up to that point, our capacitor acts like it should. And let's save that trace here. And this is now here the light blue line here. And now let's continue with the second capacitor, with our foil capacitor here. So let's plug it in here. And now the foil capacitor here is our green trace here. And we are now recognizing three things. So first, the most obvious thing is that here that the resonance frequency is shifted here to the left. So this can be easily explained by our formula for our resonance frequency here. So as the capacitance increases, and if we assume that L is constant, then the resonance frequency goes to lower values. Second, we can see here that the green shape is here lower than of the light blue one here. And the third thing we are recognizing is that here the values on the high frequency range do not differ any much anymore. Now things become interesting when placing two capacitors in parallel. So Let's save our result here. So let's check that out by placing our capacitor now in parallel. And now things become interesting. Here I've saved on the light blue line um, the bypass capacitor, uh, the decoupling capacitor, so our 100 nanofarad capacitor, and in red, our foil capacitor, our one microfarad capacitor. And now the new green line here shows that up to here it seems really good, but then the impedance increases drastically and that's not good. So this is something we want to avoid. And here when our decoupling capacitor has its resonance frequency, then our total impedance goes down again and then stays below of our those single lines here. What we are doing now is placing another resonance circuit in parallel to our serious resonance circuitry. So we have here another combination of RLC here in parallel, so for the red line here, at this point here, the inductance will dominate, whereas here for, for the other capacitor, the capacitance is dominating. So now here we have a parallel circuit of L and C, and we have a parallel resonant circuitry. And in an ideal parallel resonant circuitry, this value goes up to infinity. Now, let us check out the bulk capacitor, so our electrolytic capacitor. So let's unplug both capacitors here and just, just plug in here our bulk capacitor. So, and this is now another very interesting plot. So here we cannot see this fine shape to a very low values in our green line here. And we can also see that the value here is higher than compared to the red and the light blue one. And the reason for that is electrolytic capacitors have a higher power loss, which corresponds to that more electrical energy is converted to heat energy. And this means that the ESR, so the equivalent series resistance, is higher 
the red and the light blue one, one also would say those lines have a high quality factor, so a high Q factor, and the green line here has a low quality factor or Q factor. So let's save this trace here. So let's make this trace to the new red trace. And now things become interesting when we are now parallel connecting our electrolytic capacitor with our decoupling capacitor. So the common placement um, in front of an IC. And this is now here the green line. So the light blue one is uh, once again our decoupling capacitor, the red one is our um, electrolytic capacitor and the green one is now the parallel connection of both. And now here, this area here, where we have beforehand the high peak to the top, is now here damped. So now the bad quality factor of our electric electrolytic capacitor turns out as an advantage. So because of the bad quality factor, the parallel resonance frequency can't rise to very high values. It's damped and then drops down here and stays here at very good values. So this is a good combination here. So we have low values, very low values here at, low fre at a low frequency range as um, we want to achieve. And when the decoupling capacitor comes to its resonance frequency, it further decreases the whole impedance and always stays below the two individual lines here. Okay then, I hope you have liked this short clip and that you have learned something new. But anyways, thanks for watching.